but it's a kind of a calming feeling I always tell folks. When I think of the Holocaust and the tragedy of the Holocaust and the fact that it was my ancestors, Palestinians, who lost their land and some lost their lives, their livelihood, the human dignity, um, their existence in many ways have been wiped out and some people's passport. I mean, just all of it was in the name of trying to create a safe haven for Jews. Those comments from Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib have set off a wave of backlash tonight. President tweeting this, Democrat Representative Tlaib is being slammed for her horrible and highly insensitive statement on the Holocaust. She obviously has tremendous hatred for Israel and the Jewish people, he writes. Can you imagine what would happen if I ever said what she said and says? Here now, Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief of DailyWire.com. Ben, good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Um, I guess, you know, first of all, your reaction to what, what Tlaib said, the, you know, the initial comment that got everybody, everybody's attention. So there's the stuff that she said that's anti-Semitic, and then there's the stuff that she said that is not anti-Semitic. The stuff that she said that's not anti-Semitic is the stuff where she actually laments the Holocaust, and so people are getting that wrong. Right. The stuff that she said that is actually anti-Semitic is the part where she talks about effectively Israel being created post-Holocaust as a sop to the Jews that is historically inaccurate and wipes away the entire Jewish history of the land, which is 3,000 years old. The Balfour Declaration, signed in 1917, already started establishing a, a Jewish Israel. And then she creates this utterly fictional account where Palestinian Arabs were welcoming Jews into the, the British Palestine. That, of course, is not only untrue, it is the precise reverse of history. The leader of the Palestinian Arabs at the time, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al-Husseini, he was an ally of Hitler. He was calling for the final solution to be implemented in the Middle East. He was stumping for genocide against the Jews throughout his entire career. Palestinian and Arab resistance to, Jew to Jews living in British Palestine ended with the British actually refusing Jewish refugees from Europe in the midst of the Holocaust. So she is rewriting history to anti-Semitic effect here. I mean, why, I guess, is my question. You know, I mean, does, do you think that she doesn't understand the, the history of it or she chooses to see it differently? I mean, you can't really get into her head, but, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I, I think that she perfectly well understands the actual history here, but the revisionist history serves an anti-Semitic goal, which is that Israel is illegitimate and ought to be abolished. She's a supporter of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. She suggested that if you are a supporter of Israel, you are guilty of dual loyalty in the past. I mean, she, along with Ilhan Omar, is part of an anti-Semitic contingent of the Democratic Party, now being protected by the Democratic leadership. Uh, she, you know, she claims that she's being attacked uh, unfairly and that, as you point out, she did go on to talk about the horrors of the Holocaust, the tragedy and the horrific persecution of Jews across the world at that time. But then she goes on to talk about a one state solution. And she basically says, says this, we could put it up on the screen. She said it has to be done in a way that values around equality and around the fact that you shouldn't oppress others so that you can feel free and safe. Why can't we all be free and safe together? Palestine Palestinians and Jews uh, in in Jerusalem and in Israel. Fascinating that she's involved in, in the push for getting rid of the only Jewish state on planet Earth. I've heard no calls from her for the Palestinian Authority to allow Jews to live within its precincts. No calls from her for any Muslim state to change its religious orientation. No calls from her whatsoever for human rights in many of the Muslim countries that she defends. So it's pretty fascinating to watch her call for a one-state solution that effectively means the end of the state of Israel, which mm -hmm. she knows, which is why she's pushing it's for it. It's interesting because, you know, she when she talks about it, she also said that she's looking for a better way where I don't want people to do it in the name of Judaism, just like I don't want people to use Islam in that way. Do you see that, that comment as anti-Semitic, Ben? I'm not even sure what that comment refers to. It I mean, sounds uh, honestly, like she doesn't want it to be about religion. She wants it to be a, a, you know, a state that is not based in religion, where both Palestinians and Jews live in one state. They're very odd that she doesn't seem to care about the 50-odd Muslim states that exist on planet Earth if she's so interested in the separation of church and state and the disestablishment of any official religion. By the way, Israel is the only country in the Middle East where Muslims actually have full civil rights. All right. I, I want to ask you also about this uh, other uh, tweet that came from Alyssa Milano, um, who suggested that because there are some states that now have a heartbeat law, Georgia just passed the law, Mississippi has it, Ohio has it, and there are a couple of other states that are that look like they're about to pass it. Um, and she is very upset about this. And she tweeted, our reproductive rights are being erased until women have legal control over their own bodies. We just cannot risk pregnancy. Join me by not having sex until we get our bodily autonomy back. I'm calling for a hashtag sex strike. Pass it on. What do you think? 
Well, I'm glad that Alyssa Milano has finally discovered traditional marriage. That's exciting. And I'm, I'm glad that Democrats in Hollywood are finally discovering, hey, wait a second, sex might have something to do with making babies. And if we don't want to make babies, then maybe we should just not have sex. Gotta say, I feel kind of bad for her husband. I feel probably like her husband is pro-choice, and yet he's the one bearing the brunt of this particular decision by Alyssa Milano. So, you know, more power to feminists if they don't <laughs> wish to, to have sex, and they wish to do so in the name of apparently preserving the lives of yeah. the unborn. It, Welcome to the club, guys. It, I mean, so it is odd, you know, to you know, sort of use that as a, as a weapon. And as has been pointed out in, in a lot of the pushback against her, um, it, it, it seems almost like a sort of sexist approach to, to getting where she apparently wants to go, which I'm not sure exact, exactly where that is. Here, here's Megan McCain today on The View uh, talking about this and about how pro-life women feel about this whole argument. Watch this. People like Alyssa Milano need to understand that there are women aren't just one section of the population that are like her. For pro-life women like yeah. me, which is a very strong tenet of who I am and how I view the world, I believe that abortion is murder. So the idea that there's gray in allowing murder in the United States Except of America. And this was pushed back. You know, the discussion was, look, it's OK. I think what I think and you think what you think. And, you know, you, you heard her. Um, not backing down in terms of whether or not there's any gray with an issue that she sees as, as mur life and death, murder. Well, good for Megan McCain. She does a terrific job on The View. And uh, obviously, the, the push that all women have to feel like Alyssa Milano or they are not true women robs a lot of women of their femalehood. The fact is that three of the co-sponsors of the Georgia bill were women. All of the lies that are being promulgated by the media, the, the grave lie, the suggestion that if a woman has a miscarriage in Georgia, she's going to be prosecuted, which is just not the truth. I mean, it is just a blatant lie. The fact that that has made the rounds is demonstrative of the fact that if you are seeking to attack pro-life positions, the best thing that you can do about it is to falsify the pro-life positions and claim that really what pro-lifers want to do is control a woman's body as opposed to protecting an unborn human life. I got to go, but very quickly, do you agree legally that when you look at these bills that are being passed, that they will provoke a test for Roe v. Wade? Well, they'll certainly provoke a test for the limits of Roe v. Wade. And I, it'll be interesting to see if the if the Supreme Court loosens the standard under Planned Parenthood versus Casey or that they actually overrule Roe v. Wade altogether. My guess is that the best that pro-lifers can hope for is the continued loosening of the standard under Planned Parenthood versus Casey. Ben, thanks. Always good to see you. Thanks. You bet.